So Lucia is using energy at a rate of 420 kilocalories per hour ice skating. At what rate is Lucia using energy in calories per minute? So let me write down what we start with. We have 420 kilocalories per hour. And we want to convert this to calories per minute. So we need to figure out first, what is the relationship between kilocalories and calories? So kilo, when you see this K in front, that's the root word in the metric system for 1000. So for instance, one kilometer or kilometer, however you want to say it, one kilometer is 1000 meters. So it's a thousand of something. So to convert kilocalories to calories, so one kilocalorie, kilo just means a thousand. So that's 1000 calories. So we know that relationship. And then we also need to convert hours to minutes. And we know that in one hour, there are 60 minutes. So we have our two equivalencies that we need to change these units. And so now I'm just going to multiply fractions. And you can decide which one you want to cancel first. I'm going to cancel kilocalories first. And since it's in the numerator, I'm going to put kcal down below and regular calories up top. And we know for every one of these, there's a thousand of those. So kilocalories cancels out. So I will cancel that as I go. And now we want to cancel out hours since we want to change this to minutes. So I have to put hours up top since it's in the denominator and I'll put minutes down below. And so hours cancel out. Let me do that. And notice now that what we're left with is going to be calories per minute, which is what we want. But I need to put in the appropriate numbers here. So for every one hour, there are 60 minutes. And once we've canceled out the units, and we know that we're ending up with what we want, calories per minute. Now we can just do the multiplication. So do 420 times 1,000 and then divide it by 60. So I'm first going to cancel out a 0 there and there. And 42 divided by 6 is 7. 7 times 1,000 is 7,000. So she burns 7,000 calories every minute. And just keep in mind that calorie by itself, not kilocalorie. This is not the normal calorie that you eat for food. That's a kilocalorie. So when you see calorie in terms of food, that's actually kilocalories. So this is really just seven normal food calories per minute. But sometimes we use this smaller unit for calorie and sometimes we use kilocalorie, which you might see with a capital C. But same idea. Let's try another problem. So Lily's car has a fuel efficiency of 8 liters per 100 kilometers. And we want to know what is the fuel efficiency of Lily's car in kilometers per liter. So we want kilometers per liter. But what we're given is 8 liters per kilometer or 100 kilometers. And to figure out kilometers per liter, notice we're essentially just flipping this. So we can do that. We don't actually have to change any of the units. We can just take 100 kilometers and divide it by 8 liters. And 8 goes into 100 12.5 times. So it's 12.5 kilometers for every liter. So sometimes you don't actually have to change the units. You just have to flip the ratio. Because sometimes it's better to look at it with the units flipped. Like if you're in the grocery store and you're looking at food and it's some amount of weight per dollar. So you might be able to figure out the unit rate for dollars, like you can buy 10 kilograms for $1. Or maybe it's better to ask, well, for one kilogram, how much will that cost? So dollars per kilogram. So sometimes it makes sense to flip the units and just rephrase the question in a different way. So if that's the case, if you just have the same units, you can just flip them here and simplify the fraction. So let's try another one. So the water pressure on Mustafa as he dives is increasing at a rate of 0 0.992 atmospheres per meter. So let me write that down. So 0 0.992 atmospheres, which is ATM, divided by 
every meter. So every meter, the pressure increases at 0.992 atmospheres. And so we want to know what is the rate of increase in water pressure in atmospheres per kilometer. So right now we have atmospheres per meter. We want to change it to atmospheres per kilometer. So to do that, we need to convert between meters and kilometers. And remember, kilo just means a thousand. So for every one kilometer, there are 1,000 meters. So we can use that piece of information. And we're just going to multiply fractions now, since that's the only unit we have to convert. And we want to cancel out meters. So I have to put meters up top and kilometers down below. There are one, There is one kilometer for every 1,000 meters. So notice meters cancels, and you just end up with atmospheres per kilometer, which is what we want. So at this point, we can just carry out the multiplication. So 0 0.992 times 1,000, that would be 992 atmospheres of pressure for every kilometer that's descended. So let's move to the next one. So the inclination or the tilt of an amusement park ride is accelerating at a rate of 2160 degrees per minute squared. What is the ride's acceleration rate in degrees per second squared? So let me first write it down. We have 2160, I'll just write DEG for degrees, divided by minutes squared. Now, you have to be careful when dealing with square units or cubed units because it's trickier than you might think. So you might be tempted to say that one square minute is equal to 60 square seconds, but this is not true. These are not equal. And what I would recommend doing is drawing a square since we're dealing with square units. So you draw in your square and we have one minute on each side. And so the area of this is one minute squared. But you can also convert these to seconds. So one minute we know is 60 seconds or up here also 60 seconds. And so to find the area of this square, in seconds, you do 60 seconds times 60 seconds. So this is 3,600 seconds squared. So what we found is that one minute squared is equal to 3,600 seconds squared. So one minute does equal 60 seconds. But to get to the squared units, you essentially just have to square each side of this equation. So 60 times 60 is 3,600. But I would advise actually drawing out this box and going through the process that I did. So with this in mind, let's do our unit conversion now, since we just need to convert this minute squared. So we'll do our multiplication by fractions. And we want to cancel out minutes squared from the bottom. So we got to put it up top. And second squared goes below. For every one minute squared, there's 3,600 seconds squared. And now we actually just cancel out the minute squared and do the multiplication. So 2160 divided by 31, 3600, or 216 divided by 360. And this simplifies to 0 0.6, and our units will be degrees per second squared. So 0 0.6 is what we'd put in the box here. So be careful with these square units. We're going to do more examples with these. But... If you draw out a square, or if you have a cubed unit conversion, you can draw out a cube. But if you follow that strategy, then you're not likely to make the common mistake that everyone does, where they just use the same conversion as if it was our units to the first power. But if it's squared, you need to square both sides. If it's cubed, you need to cube both sides. So for instance, we know that 100 centimeters is the same as one meter. But if we want cubic units, we have to cube each side. So one cubed is still one, but 100 cubed, well, that's a much bigger number. So that's a one followed by six zeros. So I'll just write 10 to the six, but it's a million cubic centimeters for every one cubic meter. But for this, you can actually draw out a cube as well. So anyways, we will move on to the next one.